Howdy. Today we're going to look at one of the most magnificent structures to ever exist on American grounds before the year 1900. Furthermore, the entire city in which this building was founded is chocked full of miraculous and complex construction. However, the state capitol building of Iowa in the city of Des Moines has one of the most convoluted histories I have ever read. When we compare the current narrative, which we will talk about today, with the first photographs which we will look at today, including the provided construction photographs by the Iowa government, we can begin to see that this old world style building has much more within its elaborate Freemasonry than what is alluded to in most modern history books. Also, one of the most incredible photographs I have ever seen throughout my years of gathering these images painstakingly searching through museums and private collections would be the photograph of the Iowa State Capitol shown here. It seems so out of place to me. We have the massive building, the Capitol building, with the gilded domes in the background, essentially some of the finest architecture you could find in the United States at that time. It's built on what appears to be raised land, like a mound or a tell, possibly something that could have been created by the nearby indigenous people. And why I say that, we have these very rudimentary walls being founded in this photograph. It seems like they're being excavated, not created. But I digress. I've heard many others claim that these walls were reinforcing the raised landscape on which the capital was built. But when we look at this landscape, could these walls really have reinforced anything? We're finding so much evidence, I believe, when we look at these photographs that suggest that the capital building in Des Moines was built on top of a much earlier earthwork or important location that may have had structures on it. And it appears that this earthwork or these earlier structures are being systematically erased. However, it's also just a very jarring picture in general and one of my favorites. We see the openness of the landscape, but it has an essence to what we're seeing. It feels like the workers in the image, if we want to call them that, have had nothing to do with the astounding creation of the Capitol building behind them, but rather were brought in simply to dig out the rest. The walls, these little walls that are shown being built, are so simple when compared to the building behind. And even if this is considered to be early landscape architecture, wouldn't you think it would be built to match the glory of the building behind it? We're told in some estimates that the Capitol building cost roughly $3 million in the 1870s and the 1880s, which is a remarkable sum when adjusted for inflation. We see this structure plopped in a location that was almost selected at random, it seems, to be the new capital of Iowa, but we will get into that current narrative history in just a moment. I just see something more when we look at this building. If it's not built on raised land or earlier land that was developed by the indigenous, if this wasn't something that holds much deeper history, we are left wondering why so much time and effort was placed upon keeping this construction going and keeping the project under wraps and why this specific location which appeared very difficult to construct upon was chosen as the new capital city at all but let's dive into the current narrative and as always take everything we're about to read with a grain of salt when iowa became a state the capital was iowa city however those who initially gained office upon Iowa officially becoming a state proposed that the capital be moved further west. At the very first General Assembly of Iowa State in 1846, a plan was accepted to move the capital. By 1847, the location of Monroe City in Jasper County, Iowa, was selected as the new state capital, and intricate blueprints were drawn to construct a lavish capital building. However, this was never achieved, and it makes you wonder what exactly was inside Monroe City during the mid-1800s to make Iowa consider selecting this as the new location for the capital. But I digress. By 1848, with Monroe City and the plans being abandoned, new debates arose about the relocation of the state capital. For roughly eight years, we're led to believe that Iowa essentially sat in limbo with the General Assembly ordering the founding of a new capital, but with no action actually being taken. 
Again, it makes you wonder what exactly was going on within the government to allow for such apathy, when at the same time, we have the Industrial Revolution, which we're told allowed for the rapid construction of so many glorious old world style capitals across America and across the rest of the world. But again, I digress. Maybe they had just not founded the right city yet. Which brings us to 1854, when the General Assembly of Iowa ordered the capital be moved to the location at the fork of the Des Moines River. We're told this town was donated to Iowa by Wilson Alexander Scott, and it became the city of Des Moines. And the centerpiece of this transaction would quite literally be the location where the Capitol building stands today. Oddly, we're told it took Iowa another 16 years. Granted, we do have the impasse of the Civil War, but another 16 years for the final approval of the assembly to the blueprints and the commencement of construction of the new Capitol building, which occurred with help of a group known as the Capitol Commission of Iowa. Now, this commission was not fully funded by the government, but rather was the brainchild of one Peter A. Day, a local businessman who designated the architects of the new capital as John Cochran and Alfred Picard. We're told after much excavating of the landscape and the foundations, a cornerstone was laid on November 23rd 1871. However, and this is very interesting, we're told after flooding events, much of the original foundation was considered deteriorated by 1873. We're quite literally told stone foundations deteriorated in Iowa due to bad weather, and it took only two years for this to happen. Is that even possible? We're told the old foundations were then dug up and new foundations were laid beginning with the new cornerstone on September 29th, 1873. Is that enough to make you begin to question things? Well, let's continue. The building was apparently known by 1873 to not have any chance to be completed on budget, and the budget was already an astounding $1.5 million. We're told Iowa still kept the original plans as to not have to draw up new blueprints or new foundations. It truly sounds like they were building on top of something much larger or had already founded some sort of tunnel system or something within the foundations that caused them to need to keep this same design. Either way, we're told the project skyrocketed to a massive cost, but the original blueprints were kept even after Cochran resigned in 1872 and after the original foundations were lost, and even after Picard passed away in 1876. And that is when this massive, ornate building was left without any architects at all. Again, we're taking everything with a grain of salt. But in 1876, Iowa then hired Mifflin Bell to complete the original designs, and he promoted the idea that he was not going to adjust them. However, Mifflin Bell only stayed with the project for a short time and he was fired or he left as the architect after attempting to redesign the dome. We're told only one architect, a man I've never heard of, by the name of W.F. Hackney, stayed on the project until it was completed. The narrative then skips ahead, claiming through all the years of trials and turmoil that the Capitol building of Iowa was dedicated on January 17th 1884. But again, we have what seem to be conflicting reports here, as we're told the building was not even completed until 1886, with the final report being published on June 29th of that same year. And the full cost of the project was claimed to be $2,873,000. However, this same budget committee that published this report also claimed that every dollar was basically accounted for, besides roughly three dollars, claiming that, for lack of a better term, this project was not nefarious. Today, we might have a different opinion regarding this miraculous structure. However, the anomalies do not end there. As we're told, in 1904, the Capitol building caught fire due to the gas lighting that was being used inside the building, which was at the time in the process of being replaced with electricity. A major restoration project 
was then performed and documented with the addition of electrical lighting, elevators, and a vast telephone system. However, we're quite literally told in the narrative that there's not enough information or identifiable architects or groups that performed the restorations for us to know who actually completed these projects. It's as if this information was purposefully allowed to go missing. But again, I digress. In 1965, the building was again restored, with the dome being re-gilded, and again in the 1980s, the exterior of the capital of Iowa was renovated, which occurred in nine phases, with the last phase not being completed until fall of 2001, at a cost of Iowa taxpayers and over $41 million. The building measures 364 feet from north to south and 247 feet from east to west. The towering middle dome is built of brick and iron and tissue thin sheets of pure 23 karat gold, as well as a seal and some inner core to protect the gold dome from the weather. We're told this dome is the apex of the building at roughly 275 feet tall and from its opening in the 1880s through roughly 1924, the Capitol building in Iowa was considered the tallest habitable building in Iowa, according to most historians and scholars. The Iowa State Capitol in Des Moines is a wonderful building constructed by Freemasons, or could it be painstakingly handed down from architect to architect before being completed, but then sadly burnt down at least partially and then rebuilt and modernized. The history here is something very profound, but we're told everything that glitters isn't always gold. To wrap up the video, here is another example of what some may say is Tartarian or old world style, red brick style architecture that was being founded in Des Moines. This is the Mercy Hospital. And again, this is basically an almshouse or an asylum, one of the largest in Iowa, a location where the homeless could go, where orphans would go, according to the narrative, a massive structure considered to be the finest hospital of its kind in Iowa. Which means we have the idea that Iowa and the newly founded city of Des Moines had enough sick, they had enough homeless, they had enough orphans to warrant the construction of something so massive like this. And furthermore, we have a clear layer that this has been partially buried. We can see it, and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't looking at these photographs. This was once built on level ground, but as we peek into the images, we can see the foundation being exposed. And in portions, the foundation appears to be an entirely different type of stone. It's a different material, and it's being fused or mirrored. It was being mimicked by the brick above. It's as if the building is being dug out of the earth, not being constructed in these photographs. But I digress. Apparently, we're looking at these weather events that happened in Des Moines, that happened in Iowa, they happened in the capital, and apparently these weather events really did raise the land. They really did affect the stonework somehow and i've never really heard of weather that could erode stone at least so quickly and leave the landscape being so uneven and being so muddy i'm wondering what exactly caused all of these buildings to end up looking like they were being dug out of the dirt 